So, welcome to my YouTube channel. It has been a while since I posted my latest video, but I am back again with a new watercolor painting. And in this video, I will show you how I have created it. So, this painting is about the uh, Stationsplein, the, the, the stage, station square in Amsterdam. It's the first thing that you see when you arrive by train, uh, this large square. Uh, lots of people uh, walking with luggage, checking their phones and these buildings uh, in the background so to the, the big church and what attracted me to this scene uh, was the, the light, this bright uh, morning light and you, you are looking kind of into the light which makes all these uh, figures and buildings uh, appear like silhouettes and that makes them very suitable for painting in watercolor because you can simplify and connect all of these shapes. So now I will show you the process of how I created this painting. So I got my reference photo in the top right of the screen and I've divided it uh, into a grid uh, to make it easier uh, to create the drawing. But now we're going straight to the painting process. So you can see me here uh, using a spray bottle uh, to pre-wet the paper. Um, I'm painting on Sanders Waterford. And it, this 300, 300 gram paper can uh, soak up a lot of moisture quickly. Um, so I, I want to start on a fairly moist surface, uh, but not too moist. And what I'm doing first is creating a, a light mixture, um, a sort of reddish gray, and just applying that uh, with a, a fair, fair medium sized brush uh, to the paper. And that is uh, what my cloud shadows will be. And now I'm uh, mixing a darker mixture, a sort of uh, more bluish gray. And I will drop that into the, the reddish mixture and just let it mix on the paper. And meanwhile, uh, spraying a bit to keep things uh, wet so I can st continue uh, working in it. And just, um, I'm, I'm not uh, copying the reference photo exactly, it's impossible to create those exact same clouds as you see in the photo. Uh, don't even try to do it, uh, I'm just following roughly uh, the cloud pattern that I see in my reference. Keeping it moist with the spray bottle. And I'm painting under an angle now, um, I'm painting wet on fairly dry paper so the gravity will pull it all down and you'll see all these beads starting to form everywhere which means uh, that I, uh, those layers are still active and I can continue working in it and I use uh, a different brush to soften up the edges a bit because I don't want it all uh, all those edges to be uh, too hard and crisp And what I'm doing now, and what I'm doing now is I'm mixing um, the blue of the sky in between the clouds, which you can also see in the reference photo. And I'm using a, a very big brush, and I allow also for all these dry brush effects to. Uh, define the, the edges of the clouds and I'm just uh, letting that flow into the the cloud shadows that I already have and um, the parts that are left uh, unpainted that is uh, the white of the clouds that you see in the, in the edges so the sky is now starting to take shape and I'm just doing a bit of uh, detail work now with a smaller brush, uh, softening some of the edges, adding a bit of extra uh, shadow, um, 
to the clouds on the horizon because um, on the the, uh, the more you go to the horizon, the the smaller those cloud shapes uh, will get as they are further away. And I'm not going to wait uh, until this sky wash is is uh, dried as dried. Um, I'm just going to continue this wash downwards using uh, the gravity at the bead uh, to just continue down and put in some of the, the lightest colors already uh, of the background, of the, the background buildings. And it doesn't really matter that much uh, which exact colors you use since it's still very light. Um, but I'm uh, putting in some of the, the warmer uh, tones that you see in the highlights and some little uh, blues and reds as well and just letting this all mix together and by now the, the sky is already uh, dried down quite a lot uh, except for the very bottom um, so this allows me to already uh, define the, the first shapes of that uh, the church there and I'm still keeping it very very light since this is still the, the first wash, so this these will be the, the lightest tones um, that are visible in the building. And now with the buildings in the background merged with the, the sky above, we can start to uh, work our way further down and put in uh, a very light uh, color for the for the square just just keeping it very light and, and uh, using a, a bit of a warm grayish color and I'm trying to work fairly quickly here with swift soaks of the brush because I don't want this to dry uh, while I'm still uh, working in it and I want to, to have a nice uh, even wash and not uh, a wash with dry patches in it uh, that looks uh, like it has dried unevenly and here I was tempted to uh, put in some of the that figure already that is walking there in the mid-ground of the painting but you have to be careful with this uh, when you're when the background is very light uh, the, 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 the ground is very light so when you paint uh, a figure into the wet layer then obviously it will bleed into the, the layer below but in this early stage of the painting, that is not too much of a problem as long as uh, I'm keeping things very light. Okay, with the first wash right now, we can start working on the buildings in the background. So I'm creating this mixture on the palette for uh, the big church. And that whole area is mainly in shadow. Um, so we have a sort of um, a violet red uh, for the bricks and we have these uh, bluish domes and spires under uh, the roof so it's it's a mixture with, uh, with some cobalt uh, with a little bit of other blues uh, in there um, and for the, for the bricks uh, some burnt sienna, alizarin, uh, crimson, permanent and by using those uh, primaries, uh, if you will, the, the reds, the blues, and the more uh, brown yellows like um, burnt sienna, which is, is relatively uh, yellow compared to the alizarin. Uh, by varying that mixture, we can uh, paint this silhouette of the church. And so for the spires, I mainly use the blue using uh, my Escoda Perla brush, which has a nice point to it, which is important for creating those details. 
uh, it's easy with these synthetic brushes um, to to use too little uh, water in your mix and it will dry very uh, quickly on you so I have to work fast while at the same time maintaining uh, that amount of detail that I want to achieve so now we're working our way down the church and the blue of the domes on top is starting to mix with the, the darker mixture that I made for the bricks and I'm not only painting the silhouette but uh, I, I make sure that I keep uh, some little highlights uh, in there which I can fill up later with uh, lighter uh, colors to suggest some detail and you can do that while it's still wet and let it blend um, and in this case I will, I will leave some of them so I can uh, fill them in with some, some lighter colors later so I'm working from top to bottom and left to right so now that's spire on the right see little, little crosses on it and make sure you you keep it uh, interesting by varying colors and values and letting it all uh, bleed into each other keeping it wet with the moisturizer and here too sparing out a few of the details and I'm really trying to strike that balance between painting these these strong shapes, these silhouettes and still suggesting some of the detail in the building and that's not an easy thing to do so this church is one of the main eye catches of the painting and with the first layer done it's looking quite nice already, it's looking uh, looking fresh and now what you want to do is put in uh, some of the, the lighter tones that we will see in the buildings below that um, I have already put in some color in the first wash but it has dried up very lightly um, and it's it sort of, it's more hinting towards a mid-tone in many places so we, we do need some extra value in there so most of the color I'm putting in now is some red for the roofs and some orange yellow uh, for the bounce light that uh, is falling on uh, on the sides of these buildings it's not a city with uh, very high uh, very tall buildings so when you're coming out of the station uh, the only tall building you see is this old church really uh, and the rest are all uh, sort of small to medium sized buildings uh, standing in the foreground here defining some more of these shapes so I, I could have uh, made it all one silhouette but <clears throat> part part of these buildings is in the light um, mainly the, the, the left side of the buildings is receiving uh, some of that strong sun sunlight so and then there's uh, these lighter areas uh, in the buildings that are receiving lots of bounce light so it's quite some work to, to put in all these tones so I'm sort of speeding up the process for you And then we can also start adding some more darks there. And there's this little uh, sort of tower with a little ornament on it, on that building in front of the church. And I'm mainly using the, the same colors in the shadow as I did for the church. 
using the the sort of free primaries. And those free primaries can be any anything as long as it's vaguely red, yellow, bluish. And here I'm putting in some of the darker tones that you'll see in the background. Because there's this dark shadow on that uh, little building there. I could have of course painted that in the same layer as the church behind it, which was originally the plan, but um, this works as well. You can always uh, smooth out the edges a little bit. Make sure it doesn't overlap too much, because um, if it overlaps too much, you get these uh, these sort of strokes around your layers, these these darker lines, and that's what we don't want. And here are some more darks in those other roofs. And as we put in those stronger darks, uh, all those lighter tones and mid tones that we put in will start appearing even lighter. So. It will probably be necessary to uh, put some extra layers uh, on top of that. And again, this could have been painted together with the church in, in one layer. But there's not too much area where the shapes connect. So that doesn't matter too much. They're almost separate shapes. And as we're continuing these darker shapes towards the right, these buildings in the background start getting on more and more shape. And in this stage of the painting, it can be a bit hard to see where it's all going and what the results will look like, but you'll just have to trust the process. But by putting in these strong darks, uh, it, it's a bit easier to see what the final uh, result will be, because it's these contrasts that really uh, define uh, the, the major shapes of the painting and the composition. Now continuing downwards, drawing a few lines and then going back into it with uh, a slightly lighter mixture and letting it blend a bit. It's a sort of uh, glass thing there, glass and steel uh, structure, but it's uh, it's not really in the focus of the of the painting, so we don't have to get stuck here too much. So let's fast forward a little bit. As you can see, if I, I've put in a lot more details in the buildings and there are lots of different buildings and there's all these uh, lighter areas and shadow areas uh, alternating uh, with, with each other. And so here, what we need to do is put in some of these uh, larger dark shapes where uh, some of these windows will be. And what you don't want to do, um, we have these, these windows with all that uh, uh, woodwork uh, before it. Um, you don't want to paint it in lots of uh, loose uh, shapes. You just uh, want to create one large shape and then you can uh, go back later with some gouache, some opaque paint, and then you can uh, paint all those uh, the, the wood, uh, woodwork uh, in front of it. And we're adding a little uh, tree here, but you gotta be so careful using these greens. Uh, so often uh, when you use greens in your painting, it, it just stands out too much. I don't know what it is. Um, in real life, I mean, you all you have all those green 
and it doesn't really bother but um when you're creating a painting it, the green just stand out so much so it's better to to tone down uh, the green a bit um, making it a bit more blue a bit more more muted in color and sometimes you you really want those the screens to pop out uh, when that's the subject of your painting but here uh, it's more about not the buildings and the atmosphere and not really about the trees so we don't want to uh, make them att uh, att attract too much attention so the background is as good as done it, it just needs a little bit more detail work which we uh, can do later and now we can start putting in some of the figures starting with uh, the smaller figures in the background here and making sure of course that these figures also have a drop shadow because in the photo you can see um, that the light is coming from the left and you will have all these nice uh, drop shadows uh, coming from those figures I've added a bit more detail on the left so now I can paint some figures there as well merely uh, suggesting uh, some figures uh, waiting there for their uh, tram to come and then I'm starting uh, to paint this slightly larger figure here with a backpack and trying to paint it as much uh, in one go as possible just uh, letting these colors uh, bleed a bit in a uh, semi-controlled manner and then while it's still wet also uh, attaching uh, the drop shadow to the figure just like that not too much fitting around uh, just trying to do it in one swoop and now for uh, these figures in the middle here there are two men uh, walking next to each other and so we've got multiple figures um, people of different heights um, men women uh, adults uh, teenagers uh, some of them walking uh, close past to us some walking further away so the further you get to the horizon the more all these figures are uh, the same size basically and the heads uh, are mostly aligned so you can draw a line a straight line between all of those heads but when you go uh, further into the foreground you will see notice more uh, differences in height and you will see that the figures will start deviating from that rule that that the head is always um, uh, at the same height as, as the viewer and uh, as the uh, horizon in this case and putting in a drop shadow there and the fact that these figures are sort of silhouettes makes it a lot easier to paint them and then there's this larger figure you can see uh, I spared out the, the the top part of the figure because we need those highlights of the paper because the the light of the sun is creating this uh, these highlights uh, on the left side of these figures and then starting with the head uh, with a, a sort of reddish uh, dark reddish mixture and we can just continue down leaving a little space between the head and the body uh, to suggest some sort of color and to make the colors not bleed into each other too much because otherwise uh, all the dark paints will start flowing into the head which could be fine but it's not always what you want I'm trying to paint this figure fairly quickly I'm not uh, making these sort of sticks for legs that you often see uh, I mean that does work and can suggest some motion uh, just dry brushing the legs but I mostly prefer uh, to to define the, the legs a bit more because those, those thick uh, 
sticky legs. Uh, it, maybe it's just me, but it, it can look a bit bit awkward and unrealistic. Um, but if if you do paint those legs, um, <laughs> you do have to do it right because otherwise uh, it can get awkward very quickly as well. So it's not the easiest way uh, to paint figures, but uh, it is the way uh, that I prefer most of the time that is. So I've skipped some of these figures because there are just uh, too many of them to, to show the painting process of them all. Um, but you can see uh, here, um, I generally work from left to right, but uh, here I, I reserved uh, those figures on the left for last because um, I want to connect them to um, this uh, large shadow in the bottom, which uh, which I want to do at the very last. In the reference photo, you you can see that um, that in the foreground you have this nice shadow. Um, without it, the painting would be a bit more boring, I guess. Um, but now you have this nice separation between the darker foreground and uh, the light uh, of the midground. And with this uh, hake brush, a Japanese brush, I, I pre-wetted uh, part of the paper because I want a soft edge there. And with an uh, an Altimo, let's go the Altimo. I just put in it wash very quickly, as you can see. And then where I pre-wetted the paper, you can see we get a nice uh, softer edge. Putting in a bit more darks while it's still wet. To create a sort of uh, gradient using uh, mostly a mixture of cobalt, a bit of cerulean, a bit of neutral tint as well. But you got to be careful with the neutral tint. It can dry up uh, a bit uh, muddy if you're not careful. So the background is dried. Um, but it feels like the painting is still missing something and that might be because we uh, still have these large vertical poles that you can see in the photo. And what those uh, will do is connect the midground to the sky. And this, this creates some more verticality in the painting. So now it's not only that uh, church that's creating the verticals but also these these poles now of course you could have uh, opted uh, to just uh, not put them into the painting these these modern uh, poles with uh, well there's probably uh, cameras on there monitoring uh, everyone's movement and some loudspeakers uh, for uh, announcements but well, they are just uh, a part of the uh, the station area as it is, uh, so I, I yeah I couldn't really uh, leave them out because uh, otherwise it would more look like uh, uh, the way it would have been uh, I don't know how many years ago. But I'm not making a historical painting here. So you can see I'm uh, using a ruler. Um, without the ruler, it would be very hard to to create these perfect straight uh, lines. And then I'm trying different brushes uh, for the details, but uh, most often uh, a, a smaller perlar brush uh, works best actually. I'm sorry if my head is in the way sometimes, but. Um, this detail work uh, <laughs> requires a bit more focus, so I'm getting a good bit uh, closer to the painting to create those details. So now with all these uh, large poles in there, we can put in all of these wires for the that provide electricity for the trams. Just using a, a little a rigger brush, and the thing is, uh, with a small rigger, synthetic rigger brush like this, um, it's it's good to mix up uh, a decent amount of paint first uh, with um, 
a good amount of water and also a good amount of pigment in it um, because if you use too little water you um, the won't uh, not enough uh, paint will come off the, the brush I noticed so you have to find that uh, the right uh, amount of uh, of paint and water uh, to go with the rigger brush but not too much we don't want uh, these really uh, thick lines So the painting is now almost finished. Uh, now, um, what I feel like is missing still is um, uh, there's not quite enough figures in there yet. I think uh, I wanted to make it a little bit more busy. So here in the background, I'm uh, putting in some extra figures, just making them simple silhouettes, and putting in some extra detail here and there. And that building there needs a little bit more uh, drop shadow on the roof. And those small additions can do a lot to the painting. I mean, it's mostly finished now, but this, this, these last uh, additions uh, can still elevate it to, uh, to another level. And I'm going to put more figures here, keeping it very simple. And then later with some gouache, I can give them a little bit more detail, uh, adding some highlights. And this breaks up this, this space in the middle, which is otherwise uh, a bit empty. And now for some with some extra figures added. Um I'm going to focus more on the foreground, getting the hard care brush again, um, wetting the foreground because I want to put in a, a little bit more shadow in that uh, foreground shadow. And here I'm trying to uh put some warmer tones there on the side first not and wiping it away again uh partly because i don't want it to be too strong because this uh i don't want the shadow to to be too flat uh, it, it becomes more interesting when it's uh it's more of a gradient and also whether the figures are standing in the in the left um i want to uh, to make it a bit darker because uh that whole shadow shape is actually from uh, uh, the train station building, but those figures uh, where they stand uh, make it uh, even darker. And here, uh, putting in some extra darker paint to create that gradient. Trying not to disturb the underlying uh, paint layers too much because I don't want to lose too much of those nice uh, crisp edges. And of course, putting in a few birds in the sky. And there's one other thing that I felt was still missing. And that is uh, some extra sense of texture um, on the ground. So I'm using a fairly small brush and just dry brushing uh, some extra texture on there and also in the shadow area. Because even in the shadow, uh, some texture is still uh, visible uh, because the ground actually consists of all these different street tiles, but it, it's nearly impossible <laughs> to, to paint them all. Uh, and certainly in this painting, I'm, I'm not going to even uh, attempt that. And you still get a very strong effect. Just dry brushing in uh, some of these, these lines and that, that work so well. Uh, with the, the the more wet and wet uh, uh, layer uh, beneath. And now comes sort of the final phase, which in my opinion is uh, fairly crucial. 
to uh, to really make the painting sparkle and that is adding the highlights with some gouache now the trick to this is um, you don't want to use too much water um, because then the gouache will dry up uh, a lot uh, darker than you expect um, so the only way to to get those really uh, strong whites and those, those opaque whites is, is by not adding any uh, water if you can and a, a little bit at the most and, uh, you can just uh, paint directly from the tube just open a tube of uh, white uh, gouache and dip your uh, brush in there and just uh, apply it to the paper and it's only when you you want to mix in a little bit of uh, color here and there to make it more yellow or blue uh, that you need to be add a bit more water but I'm keeping it as dry as possible. So uh, with those highlights, I I can better define uh, all the figures. And there's lots of highlights to be added also um, in the middle ground uh, slash uh, background um, to interrupt uh, those larger dark uh, shapes and as Joseph book says, Fitch calls it, uh, it's, it's really adding on the jewelry. Um, and here too, here too on the church building, needs to be a little more, this, this, this uh, lighter uh, line. And here, almost literally uh, the jewelry on top of the, the building there. With these these little uh, white spires on them. Putting in some of the final highlights on these figures here and on the building. You can see I'm breaking up that that large dark rectangle and making them making those into uh, smaller windows. So all the highlights are added. I've either even added uh, my signature in the bottom right. And again, I am for a final time wetting the foregrounds because I still uh, think it has dried up uh, too lightly. Those darks that I put in there before, um, I also added water in there. So it, it, it dried up lighter uh, than I wanted, which often happens. So. This time I'm making sure you really, uh, I really get those darks in there so that we have this, this nice gradient. And in my opinion, it starts looking better uh, already. Wiping away some of the paint that's on the tape. And that's it, a watercolor painting of the train station square of Amsterdam and here again you can see the final results in full screen so I, I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing me create this painting and seeing my process I hope you learned uh, a bit from it um, and yeah I hope to do more of these videos again uh, in in uh, the coming uh, weeks months and i'm trying to keep them a bit more simple now um, and also create them right after i have uh, finished the painting because that way it's still all fresh in my memory and makes it a lot uh, easier more enjoyable for me to create these videos um, and by keeping them simpler it's uh, it's easier for me to create these uh, and, and uh, make more of them. So if you want to see more, um, you can uh, give uh, this video a like, uh, you can subscribe to my channel, and uh, if you hit the bell button, then uh, you will be notified when, uh, when I have a new painting for you. And so uh, let me know what you think. Uh, if you like uh, the paintings that I make, you can also uh, check them out on Instagram and uh, other platforms. Uh, where I uh, I uh, have my paintings on view, and so uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I'll see you next time.